It is Friday. Love to say it. Say it again. It is Friday. It's also the 23rd day of August. I'm not happy about August almost being over, but we'll take a Friday every chance we get. Glad to have you with us tonight. Glad to see the showers have started. Well, they didn't really start to part. They kind of stayed parted around a lot of the viewing area for the majority of the day and afternoon as we are looking at Friday night football tonight. That's where I'm out the door to in just a few moments, but got a full half hour, maybe even then some, to get to you before we do. I can't say we're going to wrap up community day coverage of 2019 because that will come later on in October when we see how much money all those nonprofits raised and was matched by you and the Community Foundation. I have no idea as to the numbers yet, but I got a little entertainment to share with you. We'll go out and talk to some folks in the crowd. Willie Nelson gave us an interview, as did Ralph Stanley. Uh, it was, you know, a great, great evening. Uh, well, morning, afternoon, and evening for Community Day. I've gotten a couple of arrests, actually three, that took place via the DESI unit of the Kentucky State Police doing a traffic stop on the Mountain Parkway late last night. A Sagersville woman arrested for burglary after stealing from a Paintsville store and a few other things to talk about. Let's go ahead and get to it. More on your weather and all that in just a few moments. Attorney General Andy Bashir is saying this week that 51 attorneys general and several major phone companies are all working together to stop those illegal, invasive, and Oh, so frustrating and annoying. Scam calls. All of the major networks, AT&T, Bandwidth, CenturyLink, Charter, Comcast, Consolidated, Frontier Sprint, T-Mobile, U.S., Sailor, Verizon, Windstream, they all, all are participating. A total of 51 attorneys generals saying that they are participating with these phone companies as a result of bipartisan public-private coalition efforts, they say, of these attorneys general and 12 phone companies, which have agreed to adopt eight principles into their business practices to fight those illegal calls, which are driving us crazy. Uh, first, the phone companies are going to work to prevent the illegal scam robocalls by implementing call blocking technology at the network level at no cost to customers, making available to customers additional free, easy-to-use call-blocking tools. They're going to implement technology to authenticate that calls are coming from a valid source and monitoring their networks for scam robo-traffic is also another promise they're making. Phone companies are going to assist attorneys' general anti-scam call enforcement efforts by knowing who their customers are so knowing who their customers are so that bad actors can be identified and investigated, investigating and taking action against suspicious callers, including notifying law enforcement and state's attorneys general, working with law enforcement and states to trace the origin of those robocalls and requiring telephone companies with which they contract to cooperate in traceback identification. Going forward, they say phone companies will stay in close communication with the Coalition of Attorneys General to continue to optimize scam call protections as technology and scammer techniques change. Hallelujah is all I have to say on that matter. From the Big Sandy Community and Technical College campus, find out how you can earn your GED and meet with their partners who can help you on your journey to success. They have an opening of the new Skills U Hub at the Big Sandy Community and Technical College Hager Hill Campus Friday, the 30th of this month, 2 till 4.30. Uh, I'll put that over on the community calendar and remind you when it gets a bit closer, which is just really next week, I guess, isn't it? With that said, a couple of these arrests that took place during a designated safety checkpoint last night being conducted by the state police and their DESI interdiction unit may sound a little familiar compared to a couple of reports that I had last week. We had two different occasions where three individuals in each case, all from Louisville, were arrested by local police. In one vehicle, or in one instance, it was a vehicle almost pulling into the driveway where it was taking a significant load of methamphetamine and still an unknown substance, grams and grams and grams of which those three, all three young Louisville men arrested for trafficking and facing other charges. There was another case last week, three individuals on their way out of eastern Kentucky with a large amount of cash, which were believed to have been here selling drugs and headed back to their home of Louisville. Last night, these two Louisville men were arrested for heroin and other charges, trafficking in heroin, trafficking in meth, and that wasn't the only traffic stop that resulted in the seizure of heroin last night from an out-of-town individual. I'm still trying to reach authorities to find out the direction of travel and their point of origin or final destination. 
for two Louisville men that were arrested in that traffic safety checkpoint last night, as well as the quantity of drugs that were taken from them, the citation only reading greater than two grams. But nevertheless, Kentucky State Police arrested two men, 26-year-old Andrew Allen of Louisville and 19-year-old Chandler Hines. The traffic safety checkpoint was being conducted when a vehicle, an 09 Chevy Malibu, pulled up with Mr. Andrew Allen behind the wheel, Chandler Hines in the passenger seat. Upon contacting the driver, the state police detected an odor of marijuana coming from inside the car. They also noticed the driver was not wearing a seat belt. The driver telling authorities that he also didn't have a valid driver's license, only a Kentucky instructional permit. Troopers requested that the driver pull off to the shoulder of the road where both men started to appear to be nervous and act in a strange or unusual way. All this giving authorities probable cause to search the vehicle and pat both men down. The passenger uh, was observed having uh, a clear plastic bag containing what was believed to be methamphetamine stuck down in his pants. While Andrew Allen was being arrested and after being told that uh, anything on his person would be found upon being booked into the Big Sandy Jail and he would face additional charges, uh, authorities found another clear plastic bag on his person this believed to be a quantity of heroin that was hid in his pant leg. Allen was charged with possession in the first degree for the heroin, an instructional permit violation, failure to register or transfer a motor vehicle, no operator's license, and no insurance, while his passenger, Chandler Hines, was charged with public intoxication of drugs and trafficking in methamphetamine. At that same traffic safety checkpoint that the Kentucky State Police Desi East Criminal Interdiction Team was conducting, another vehicle approached coming through McGoffin County, and when the vehicle did so, Officer Bradley Bond observed a purple zipper case that was just lying on the dash in front of the speedometer of the vehicle that was being driven by this woman, 39-year-old Kristen or Creston A. Toomey of Paris. There was also an orange cap of a needle that was said to have been seen sticking out of that purple zipper case. The officer also said that Toomey was acting in a nervous or unusual behavior. She was pulled over onto the side of the roadway, failed field sobriety test, and admitted to being a heroin user, and there was heroin that was also found inside that bag along with several needles and other bits of paraphernalia, including some other pills identified as bupropenorphine and naloxone. She was read of rights and charged with possession in the first degree of heroin, possession in the second degree for the drugs or pills, and possession of drug paraphernalia as well as no insurance, no operator's license, or operating on a suspended license, and DUI first offense. If you've never seen what's inside the seasonal shop, you've never seen anything like it. And if you have seen what's inside the seasonal shop, you've never seen it like this. From all the styles of pillows, dishware, bedding, and wall hangings, it's full of beautiful home decor. And there are frames for anyone and any occasion. There are neat and unique ways to design and do it yourself. There are flowers too perfect to be real. And from expecting moms to newborns, toddlers, teens, and adults, the fashions and designs and jewelry are simply endless and always changing at Fraser's Prater Drugs Seasonal Shop. Appalachian Wireless has a question for you. Would you rather pay $650 or $66 for a smartphone? If you think this answer is simple, then the Appalachian Advantage plan is for you. Pay less upfront for today's hottest smartphones, and then pay just a few dollars more every month on the monthly bill. Many smartphones are $5 a month or less after you factor in the $20 discount from the Advantage plan. Compared to the contract offering, better service, bigger savings. That's today's Appalachian Wireless. Payment agreement required. See store for details. At Sagersville National Bank, they know your house is much more than your home. It's an investment, and for many of us, the biggest we'll ever make. And whether it's for needed repairs and maintenance, or a new addition or renovation to give you some more room and more equity, let Sagersville National Bank deal with all the financial work and worry. Real and real competitive, hometown, homegrown, home improvement loans at Sagersville National. Here's a little of what's new at Parkway Gun and Pawn. A big selection of hunting, bully knives, some to use, some to collect, or both, starting as low as $14.99 a piece. Hey gamers, while they last, they just got in two PS4 Pro editions in perfect condition. And as new, still in the packaging, big flat screens at big discounts. 
a new selection of kitchen gear and appliances, and even a new in the box 30 gallon electric hot water heater. You never know what you're gonna save on, but you're always gonna save at Parkway Gun and Pond. SSI and disability cases are harder to win these days. You need all the help you can get. If the government has turned you down, I will not. Many factors are considered when a claim is being processed, like your age, education, physical, and mental disabling conditions. When it comes time to winning your disability case, you should not face a federal judge alone. You need an attorney who is experienced, determined, hardworking, knowledgeable, and dedicated to helping you win benefits that you deserve. If you need help with your SSI or disability case, call me, Donald Wayne McFarland, and let me go to work for you. Another arrest making headlines last night. This is the behest of the Paintsville Police Department, which arrested a Sagersville woman, a repeat offender, which appears to be the reason she may have been charged with burglary instead of just shoplifting. I'm uncertain as to that as of right now, but that is a relatively safe assumption after trespassing into a Paintsville business where she had been caught stealing before. It happened last night at around 10 o'clock. I say that given the fact that Misty D. Salyer, 45 of Salyersville, was charged with burglary in the third degree for shoplifting from the Paintsville Walmart. The Salyersville woman was observed by the Walmart asset protection staff concealing several items and then going through all points of sale without attempting to pay for them in an attempt to steal from Walmart. She was caught shoplifting and trespassed by Walmart asset protection staff about six months prior. And given that circumstance, she now appears to have been charged once again with burglary in the third degree by Officer Zach Mitchell with the Painesville Police Department. The items in her possession totaled $77.09. She was lodged in the Big Sandy Regional Detention Center and has since posted bond. Still left. Your weather forecast and the last thing we do tonight will take about eight or nine minutes or so and go back and take a look at Community Day, which means I've got a lot of entertainment to show you. I don't have everyone that performed, but I got a little bit of a lot, so stay with me and some folks to talk to. It was a really great event. We'll get to that in just a second. Here's saying happy birthday starting tonight's calendar. It's time to say happy birthday as we kick off this Friday's McGoffin Farm Bureau community calendar. Happy birthday wishes tonight from a host of family and a host of friends to Terry Brown. Happy, happy birthday to you. Just a couple of quick reminders on the community calendar. Don't forget that this Monday, this Monday morning at the McGoffin County Health Department, Teleworks will be in Sagersville for another job fair. This is at-home employment jobs starting at $12 to $13 an hour. And you can find out more from 10 till 3 on Monday. Bring a valid ID and an electronic copy of your resume if you can. That will help dramatically. Farm Field Day has been set for September the 17th. I'll remind you when it gets a bit closer, this is going to be on the farm of Avavian and Rick Deaton on Bear Branch. They'll register at 5, eat at 5.30. The program starts at 6, talking about beef quality care, beef quality and care assurance training, as well as a host of other topics. And you can have your calendar announcements and birthday wishes and anniversary wishes, too, just like these, put on the calendar just by letting me know. Tell me, and we'll tell everyone else about it. One last announcement tonight as we turn to our obituaries, this one coming in loving memory, in loving memory of Cleo Carpenter Harmon, loved and greatly missed by a host of family and friends on her birthday. And sentiments were also asked to be said tonight in loving memory as well of Clifford Brown Jr., greatly missed by a host of family and friends. Just like that, we've jumped into the spring allergy season with all the buds and blooms, tree and grass pollen, mold, and all the nasal congestion, sneezing, itchy nose and eyes and throat that they cause. Don't get caught off guard. Protect yourself daily with a quick trip to Parkway Pharmacy for over-the-counter and prescription relief. And you can always log into parkwayfarmacy.com to have your prescriptions ready when you get there at Parkway Pharmacy in Sagersville. Big Sandy Healthcare and Hope Family Medical Center are proud to announce the newest addition to their staff and team of over 200 dedicated employees and medical professionals. Podiatrist Dr. Cheryl Stalder Cheney has joined Big Sandy Healthcare at the Hope Family Podiatry Center in Sagersville on Mariah Boulevard, just a couple of doors up from the least famous recipe. For anything minor or serious foot or ankle related, 
Dr. Stalder Cheney is now accepting new patients at Hope Family Podiatry Center in Salyersville. From brakes, exhaust, suspension, fluid changes, to expert collision and auto body, to turning your 4 before or diesel from mild to wild, get real auto maintenance, paint, and repair at Black Smoke Performance in Dixie of Sagersville. 349-8785. Getting the best deal on the best tires with the best service has never been easier. Just log on to ConleyTire.net, check out the latest rebates, sales, and promotions, pick out the tires you want, and email, call, or come by. For huge savings from the family who's been proudly serving the area for over 32 years, Conley Tire in Staffordsville, 297-2424. Your new IGA has fresh brewed coffees and delicious donuts made seven days a week. Daily made breads piled high with any meat or cheese you can think of. And come and taste the salads, broccoli and cauliflower, cornbread, and their gourmet chicken salad made fresh right here. They've got fruit and vegetable and meat trays made with a little love and celebrate anything with perfectly professionally made cakes. All fresh and ready for your next meal party or event at your Sagersville IGA, where it's a new day, place, and way to shop. Before we play our way out tonight with Community Day coverage, a quick weather update. This has pretty much been the pattern for most of the day. We've seen some light showers, but for the most part, the most of them have been to the north and south of Sagersville and Paintsville, and I'm hoping they're going to continue to go on along that pattern and out of here for the rest of the evening, setting us up with a nice night for Friday night football. That looks to be the way it's going to go. A light sprinkle or two is not out of the realm of possibility, but it looks to be clouds and dry air from here on out, for at least the most part. So with that said, we'll knock shower chances down to 30%, and that's really for the next hour or so. So here's to hoping for, albeit a cloudy and somewhat cool but dry, Friday night for football. Looking forward to highlights the first of next week. 58 degrees out there tonight where we'll bottom out. We'll pick it up 20 degrees tomorrow. Look what a weekend we have in store. Still perfect. 78 and partly sunny on your Saturday. Signaling fall is getting closer by the day, certainly, and maybe even by the hour. Partly cloudy skies tomorrow night, upper 50s again. Sunday, 80, partly sunny. You'll notice a chance of showers. I think that's going to be in the latter portion of your Sunday, so I'm hoping we're going to be in for a really nice day Sunday as well with partly sunny skies and temps right around 80 for the majority of it. Shower chances that night and clouds both on the increase Sunday and into your Monday. And there's what the next setup does. Monday, it keeps us just below 80 with more clouds than sun and shower chances right Right now hovering at about 40 45 percent or so to start off next week now going on a little further down your outlook we'll look to tuesday where we see temperatures get above the 80 degree mark for the first time in a few days to the tune of 83 degrees but still mostly cloudy and a 40 percent chance of showers pretty much after one and continuing on throughout the rest of your tuesday wednesday 82 mostly sunny a 30 percent shot Thursday looks dry, sunny, and about 84. Friday looks dry, mostly sunny, and about 83. So, 16 down. Not officially in the books as of yet. We've still got the check presentation to come later on in October, but... For all intents and purposes, as for that portion of it, the 16th Annual Community Day is over and done with, and the Community Foundation and the Sagersville National Bank literally are already actively working on the 17th Annual Event. So far, the 15 prior Community Days have raised over $1.147 million. That's not counting the one that just happened days ago. I don't have any of those numbers yet to add to that total. But wow. $1,147,000. So on Saturday, I rolled into the 16th annual Community Day in the middle of, as you're about to see, Nathan and Chessie Arnett's set as they were in search of that great old country music before crowd looking to be highly entertained and well-fed before leaving, uh, knowing that they had enjoyed as much as humanly possible a day's worth of events, all supporting those local nonprofit volunteer organizations that work so hard to support us. We met 
here at the station It was a quarter to nine My guitar right beside me The songs went on my mind I'm going to Alabama I'm going to play me a country show Music just ain't the same like it was hundred years ago. Well now country music, where in the world have you gone? And no one tells a story like Haggard and John. When Hank came on to sing along, we knowed every song. Well now country music, where have you gone? For Jason and Wayne and Sean and Gary, I'm Tim. We're Blue Highway. We'll see you guys down the road. Since they shut down the mines I got a wife and six children And they're hungry all the time So I had to find another way Not one that I'm proud of But the union says it's hopeless We can't live on the We really need some groceries And the rent's way overdue That's why I've got the boo leg Looking over my shoulder A short step from the long arm of the law He's all And in between all that star-studded and acclaimed music, there were special moments to stop and honor. This year, the Community Foundation honoring our local law enforcement. With lucky moments throughout the day for many, like Hermely Oksher, who has cat-quick reflexes in the money machine. Somebody said you better set a record, I don't know. I hope so. I racked us. And then it was time to find out how much fun the crowd was having. Community Day means helping these small local nonprofits that it really means a lot to me, everybody in this county. It's just a really great organization. I really like the food. They got a lot of different kinds of food, you know, they got deep fried stuff, stuff with ice cream on it. It's really good. What's your favorite part of Community Day? Probably the Isis. The Isis? Mm -hmm. Oh, we always have fun at Community Day. I think it's a uh, a great opportunity for the nonprofits. I'm here today with the Mission, Kentucky Mission Bible Training Center, and they are an organization that a lot of the people in McGoffin County still are not aware of, and uh, uh, it's a great work for the Lord. They do discipleship. Uh, it's 8 to 12 months free, and uh, they help people that struggle with addiction. And after making the rounds, there's always more music. Your mother will try to protect you, hold you as long as she can. But the higher you climb, the more you can't see. Now that's something I understand. One day you'll look at your own son There'll be so much you want to say But he'll have to find his own way Down the road he must take The course he must run That's how it always has been Between fathers and sons It's a bridge you can't cross it's a cross you can't bear 
It's the words you can't say, things you can't change, no matter how much you care. So you do all you can, then you've got to let go. You're just a part of the flow, the river that runs between fathers and sons. Well, I'm so glad to be uh, asked to be a part of the community day here in Salyersville. Uh, two years in a row, I believe, now we've been here, and uh, we always look forward to it. We had a great time last year, and uh, looks like there's a good crowd of people and a uh, beautiful day, and uh, hopefully we can come here for many more years to come. Can you give me any breaking news or anything on anything you got going on? Well, I got a brand new gospel album that is out, and uh, actually it's been number two on the Billboard charts, had a number one single, and... Uh, Things are going really good. We're getting ready for the Dr. Ralph Stanley Hills of Home Bluegrass Festival. That'll be over uh, in Coburn, Virginia. It'll be May the 20th through the 23rd. So uh, that'll be 2020. And Ralph and the other groups performing weren't the only big names at Community Day. Willie and Friends made a special surprise guest appearance. And I thought, who better to ask what they thought of our Community Day Festival than the worldly traveled Willie Nelson? I think, uh, well, Willie says, that's me, that this is the best festival I've ever been at. You know, the people here are just the best in the world and I uh, appreciate being invited. And, uh, you know, this is near the end of my career, and uh, I I'm glad I came here. What, what, what's this whole ride taught you? Anything? The ride, the ride has taught me that God is great. He, he's, we should worship Him all the time, giving us this great country of ours, this great planet. And we should love everybody and uh, just really respect everybody and, and uh, just do good works for everybody. That's, that's what the good Lord says. Russell Moore is the IBMA's most awarded male vocalist. And the group as a whole has won Group of the Year more than a half dozen times. This part of mine is mine for the days of long ago. Just a barefoot boy in my secret fishing hole. Well, I'd love to hold that blue-eyed girl. She's forever on my mind. But I know I can't escape from doing hard rock mountain time. I can see the autumn leaves falling round that cabin door And daddy plowing in the fields at home where I will walk no more One day I'll be free and over prison walls I'll find But it's hard rock out in prison till I die And before it was over, thousands of people packed the Ramey Park, many going home with some awesome prizes like cash, like Donna Stevens, who won the Ford Fusion, donated by Rick Salyer Body Shop. Well, oh, no, my baby, she's long and lean. That's with her, you see, she's a man. She's my sweet little thing. She's my pride and joy. She's my sweet little thing. She's my pride and joy. And wrapping this report up tonight, just like they do at each community day, we'll close things out tonight with Traveler, formerly and maybe forever known as the Dixie Bridge Band. Oh, yeah, beautiful. Come on, everybody. Come on now, yeah. Let's hear you sing.
That's a good way for me to go out, so I'm going to leave it at that, except for saying good night. Thank you. I'm off to catch the first game of Hornet football this season. We'll have highlights next week and much more to come on a host of other news. Have a good weekend. Enjoy the beautiful weather. See you Monday night.